Good evening and welcome to the City of Helena City Commission meeting, March 22nd, 2021, 6 p.m. This meeting is called to order. Madam Clerk, would you take the roll, please? City Attorney Chiodin. Here. City Manager Harlow Shop. Here. Commissioner Holliday. Here. Commissioner Dean. Here. Commissioner Logan. Here. Commissioner O'Loughlin. Here. Mayor Collins. Here. Welcome and thank you for participating in the City of Helena City Commission meeting. We are pleased to be able to provide this alternative meeting format in the city's effort to broaden public participation. Please be patient as we may experience technical difficulties during the meeting. We welcome your public commentary during the meeting. Please read the following tips and guidelines for the app usage and your participation. Would you rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. <coughs> Welcome everyone and uh, to our presenters, I want to remind you, you have no more than 10 minutes to present whatever you have to present. At the conclusion of 10 minutes, your line will be turned off. So please adhere to the uh, guidelines. The minutes for 914, 928, 127, 1221, 111, 28, 222nd were received. Do we have any comments, questions? If not, they will stand as submitted. Consent agenda claim. Madam Manager. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening. I would ask that you entertain a motion to approve the claims of March 2nd, March 5th, and March 12th in the amount of $669,200.13, as well March as, six? Uh, excuse me, on, uh, did I say March 6th? I'm sorry, I'll restate that. <laughs> March 2nd, March 5th, and March 12th, three separate dates for a total of 1 million, $23,764, uh, $1,023,764.80. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I'll move item A, claims. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Madam Clerk. Commissioner Holliday. Aye. Commissioner Dean. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner O'Loughlin. Aye. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries five to zero. Are you still on? I am, Mayor. Uh, Yes, I am, Mayor. <laughs> uh, Mayor, I would uh, recommend you request a motion to adopt the BARSA 2021 allocation, and that is the state of Montana's uh, had passed an increased gas tax law in 2017 that gives local government more funding for street projects. The allocation to local government started in the second half of 2018. The city of Helena's portion is approximately $660,000. This motion is to consider a resolution requesting distribution of bridge and road safety and accountability program funds to be used for Rodney Street Project number 19-31. Thank you, Madam Manager. I'll entertain a motion. Yes. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Commissioner Logan. 
I would move to approve a resolution requesting distribution of bridge and road safety and accountability programs funds to be used for the Rodney Street project number 19-31. Second. Second. Any discussion? It's been moved and seconded. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Halliday. Aye. Commissioner Dean. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner O'Loughlin. Aye. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries five to zero. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Next, I would uh, like to request that you entertain a motion to support the completion of forest fuels reduction activities within 80 acres of open space belonging to the city of Helena on Mount Helena under the fuels mitigation project. The city of Helena owns and manages 1,838 uh, 1, acres of open space properties located in the wildland urban interface surrounding the city. Approximately 1,500 acres of city's open space open lands properties are contiguously covered with coniferous forests surrounded by grasslands. By uh, approving this motion, you will, uh, Mayor and Commission, adopt and approve the Western States Wildland Urban Interface Grant Award for Mount Helena Fuels Mitigation from the Department of Natural Resources. Thank you, Madam Manager. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move acceptance of the Western States Wildland Urban Interface Grant Award. Thank second. you. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Madam Clerk? Excuse me, Mr. Mayor, I was having trouble with my mute button. Uh, Commissioner Halliday? Aye. Commissioner Dean? Aye. Commissioner Logan. Commissioner mm -hmm. Logan. Aye. Commissioner O'Loughlin. Aye. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries five to zero. Bid awards. Bid awards for Linda Avenue, Park Avenue, Water Me, Replacement Sewer Me, Extension Project number 19 27. Director Leland. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, give you a, uh, this is a bid award for water main replacement on Lindale, and I will try and share uh, my screen here real quick. Hold on. All right, and then we'll get the slideshow started, I hope. All right, there we go. So we're going to replace and upsize the water main in Lindale that goes from basically the Benton Avenue intersection all the way to just short of Kessler, uh, Kessler Avenue that comes in, in Lindale. And then we're also going from uh, Euclid Lindale all the way up into Carroll College to replace those mains. They have been leaking and basically offline for the past two to three years because it is in MDT right away and it's it's difficult to, as you know, to be able to shut down the traffic. And then also that there is concrete, not just asphalt uh, to replace it. So we have reinforced concrete that we have to put in. This is the second time that we actually bid the project. First time we bid it last fall, we received no bids because of the concrete work. They could not find any subcontractors to actually work. So we went out this fall to go uh, see if we could get some other contractors and we did receive three bids. So the water main is here. Then we had a shared service line, this yellow, uh, to take care of some of the shared service lines for the sewer. So it's a sewer and water main replacement, but we did have three bids and Hard Rock Road Building and Utilities was the lowest responsible bidder for 756,555 and 25 cents. So. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Comments or questions from the commission? Uh, Mr. Mayor, just a couple questions. Go ahead, Commissioner Dean. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's for Mr. Leland. Um, I know that obviously in here it talks about that um, it needs to get started in May. I'm 
assuming with school getting out. Um, and I'm wondering to what does, I guess, the traffic adjustments look like during this project and then how long do we expect those to last? Um, the traffic control plan is that there is one section of main, if you can see my cursor, that goes all the way across all four lanes. That is actually being abandoned. It um, doesn't represent here. Um, and we're putting in a new line here. So we're only going to have to shut down the westbound lane closest to Carroll College. So we'll neck it down similar to what we did when we had the water main break here over by um, Hunthausen Way a few months ago. And so we're gonna shut it down. So it'll be just one lane of traffic going through. Uh, there will be Jersey barriers going along there. Um, and it will probably be close to six weeks that it'll have to be shut down, but we are in conversations and, and keep MDT involved and they have approved the traffic control plan. Thank you. When we get out in, one I'll add is when we get out into the intersection, that won't last too long and it'll probably be a night tie-in, but there will be considerable uh, traffic delays and congestion, but we will look at a nighttime tie in at the uh, Benton Euclid intersection. Any other comments from the commission? One quick question, Mayor. Go ahead, Commissioner Lawful. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Director Leland, apologies if you already mentioned this, but um, was it then reflected in the budget in FY20 or where where would have this, this project been in, in the budget process? Uh, Mayor, Commissioner, that it actually started in FY19 uh, okay. because that's when we started to actually um, design the project. And then we have some budget amendments because it was a little higher than the estimate because of how high the concrete prices are going to be able to go. So we shifted around some projects. So it'll be the FY19 budget carryover with some adjustment in the FY20. So there is nothing in the FY21 budget. Nor, nor would there be any in the FY20 or upcoming or FY22 budget. No. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments from the commission? Mr. Mayor, a question for Mr. Leland, please. Go, go ahead, Commissioner Logan. Thank you, Mr. Leland. I, I can see your cursor pretty well. Would you show me the uh, sewer line as it extends on north off of Lindale on the park and and just roughly. Mayor, Commissioner, the sewer line actually goes to Bishop Carroll Drive. It is this yellow line that comes in here and that's just the shared service. So we actually on the sewer line are not getting into the Lindale Euclid Avenue. We are just doing it into, um, into Park Avenue. Um, I believe it's still called Park Avenue. They've changed a lot of names in Carroll, but it's Park Avenue uh, onto Bishop Carroll Drive. So who Mr. Mayor, if I may, please follow up. Who will that? Which which residences or occupancies will that service? It will serve this residence here, then 1004, 1108, 1120, and this one is already connected, but it'll serve these four lots. Uh, going with the policy that was set up uh, with former commissioner commissions um, that set aside funds to take care of shared services uh, with the sewer line extensions. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. Any other comments from the commission? Any public comments? Madam Clerk, do we have any raised hands? Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, I have no raised hands and I've received no written public comment. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. Mayor, I would move to award the Lindale Avenue, Park Avenue, Water Main Replacement Sewer Main Extension Project number 19-27 to the lowest responsible bidder, Hard Rock Road Building and Utilities, Inc. in the amount of $756,555.25. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? 
Madam Clerk. Commissioner Halliday. Aye. Commissioner Dean. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner O'Loughlin. Aye. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries five to zero. Thank you. Communications proposals from commissioners. What sayeth you, commissioners? Oh, they're very quiet. Okay, we'll keep moving along. <clears throat> report of the city manager, city attorney. Uh, Mayor, commissioners, nothing to report, but a reminder, you should have just gotten uh, the corrected PSA. I apologize for that. Um, for a special litigation meeting on Monday, the 29th at 6 p.m. and review the materials for that and be prepared to discuss then. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. Report of the city manager. Thank you, Mayor, and good evening, Commissioner. Commissioners, I'm uh, wanting to just share two updates. First, the um, team is currently working on e-bikes and e-scooters as two issues in the community we'll be bringing to you at an administrative meeting, um, further steps that we're contemplating and moving the conversations together and viewing them um, both in the where they can be used and where they cannot be used conversation and what they're defined as. Those have been two struggles that we've had um, internally so that um, we can move to a final decision on some uh, pieces of our, our city code. So just wanted to let you know that our next conversation will be at the April 7th admin meeting where we'll discuss e-bikes and e-scooters together. Uh, Next up, though, I would like to share to you, this is my, my last update, and I'm actually going to turn it over to Teresa Ortega with Good Samaritan. And uh, during the January 6th Commission administrative meeting, the Commission heard an update from the community partners about homelessness and, and COVID. And at the time, Commissioner Halliday had asked Good Samaritans what gaps there are and how those can be supported by the city. At the same time, the team had been working on addressing an ongoing issue on the Shopco property. And on January 25th, uh, we met with the Good, I met with the Good Samaritan team. And then soon thereafter, we spoke with the team even further within the um, parks, uh, parks, police, transportation, and other um, teams so that we could try and strategize ideas with uh, good, the Good Samaritan team and, and hear more around their ideas. Tonight's presentation is really from Good Samaritan about the ideas that they've, um, they've come up with and shared. And um, we look forward to um, answering any questions that you might have and follow up. The team who has been in those conversations are also present this evening. Should you have further comments or questions after hearing from Ms. Ortega? Thank you, Madam Manager. Ms. Ortega, you have the floor. You are muted. Good start, off to a good start. Well, good evening, everyone, Major um, Commissioner Col uh, Commissioners, Mayor Collins, um, and City, City Managers, thank you very much for having us. Um, and we do thank you all for bringing it up last, two meetings ago, I think it was, when we were talking about what we could do better to address the issues of homelessness in the community. And as we, you know, we're gonna try and go quick on this, but there's so much information. Um, one of our big concerns that we started out talking about is what's going to happen after this COVID's money is gone, because we are serving a lot of people. Um, Good Samaritan has had over 100 people in our hotel situations with Rocky Mountain and the CARES money, and of that, about 30% of the people there we've, had, we've housed. So, And we do know also that God's love is full at the same time as well. We also know that our staff has been doing quite a bit of case management with people there, which is definitely a need we, need we have in this community as a case manager to follow people who are homeless and make sure that they're getting housing and they're staying housing and their needs are being met. So what happens when the COVID money is gone? To us, that's very concerning. We did not come to the city Commission to ask for money. We came to address our concerns and talk about our concerns that we're seeing now and plan forward. Um, I'm going to, we're going to talk a little bit about, we did take a trip to Missoula in case we need to open some other kind of shelter, if you will, 
um, in Missoula, we they what we visited was called a temporary slip, temporary safe outdoor space that, in other words, is also called a tent shelter to most people, but we do not want to call it that. We'd like to bring that information to you all to look at. Um, so we've got one case management, two, another place for people to stay when shelters are full. Um, what we're also seeing is there's many, many, many of the folks we are serving have mental health issues. Um, and when people are kicked out of existing shelters with nowhere to go, an issue of communicating between agencies to make sure we're not landing people on the streets. We did implement another uh, program this year through the CARES Money that's called Street Outreach that's been very, very successful in meeting people on the streets, getting them off the streets into a safe place. And we're finding many of the folks we're seeing in these situations are physically ill and cannot get to the services they needed. So therefore, we have now set up a connection with St. Pete's and when people are homeless and coming out of the hospital, they have nowhere to go and they need a clean, safe space. So this, all of these together, and I hope I'm not jumping around too much, are bringing us back to what are we going to do when this COVID money is gone? How are we going to address these needs? So what we want to share with you is that we have talked to a hotel and you know they're always willing to sell for the right price. I don't know if that's an option. Sharon and I had talked a little bit about that, what we could think of. But what we'd like to share with you is this temporary uh, safe outdoor space, I get it wrong every time, that we went up and looked at in Missoula. And I'm going to try and screen share those. If I do that, I'll be very surprised if I get this up. Um, what did it do? Um, Rachel, did those go through, through to you this afternoon? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm trying to get back there and I don't know what I did. Are you, can you see the screen, the pictures up? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay, so I'm just going to start the beginning of this for you all. and. It's a, a faith-based group out of Missoula that put this together with their church. They've coordinated with almost every facet of their community, the city, the county. Um, they, have, um, they have security at night. They've gotten with the fire department. They've gotten with the police department to get this all set up and put together. Um, what the first slide that you're looking at, that's the entryway. It's on private property. They made it very clear it's best to work with someone on private property as not to overlap with city and county concerns and such of um, requirements. So that's just what we were told on that. Um, this property, a rancher had it who has it. He's been trying to sell it for 10 years. And um, he finally just leased it, I believe it's to the church for a dollar a year. Um, they started this program in January, end of January, and since then they've um, put their program up, and, and I do want to say for um, Chief Hagan that one of the questions we were very specific about when we met with them is, what's your rate of having to call the police? Tell us about that in the setting first. And they've had three calls they've had to put out, one to the PD up there and three to um, for paramedics to come out for someone. So those are pretty good odds, but also there's only 20 people that can be served at a time through this tents, tent area. There's 20 tents. 20 tents? Two could be to a tent with a couple. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to Ara to explain the program even a little bit better. Um, so, We've got one of around show the yep. platform. Yeah, these are the platforms. They have insulation underneath them. There's going to be 20 altogether. Uh, every few tents, they're going to put um, big fire pits out there. Let's go back. Mm -hmm. We cut the pictures short because there were so this many. This is an overview of all of it. So these are the tent pads. And there's a set over here and the entryway, and there is a river down here. Uh, but then this is all open space around it. And they keep a pretty good contact on who comes in and out of this road. 
if there's they have do not trespass and someone starts coming down the road that doesn't belong the staff that are there immediately get up to um tell them it's a private program going on the way they kind of described it was it's more of a fire you know um a, a fire tent area it's clean it's kept very nice um, there's a couple of four outhouses you want to scroll down please and see that is the staff's tent so that's where their command basically is all set up they've got all their computers in there um anything they need to keep going throughout the day and even with clientele and yeah. that documentation they also have another one for the warning tent for all of the clients there and that has a uh, a hand washing station in it um ways to cook the food heater yeah they have wood wood stove in there to stay warm with and there's some food in there they um the clients that come to us are responsible for having their own food and since they're walking distance to one of the grocery stores <clears throat> they provide them the church provides carts for people to walk and get their own food and, <clears throat> excuse me i'm sorry to get their own food and bring it back to their tent but on a whole the, the program does not supply or hold food for them there may be snacks or something all of these platforms are also done by church volunteers so if you can see how it sits on here um it's just enough room they're one to two person tents <coughs> They've also connected uh, back here somewhere, uh, back where the arrow is, they've connected with the uh, um, Humane Society as well, who's come out and put um, cages out there for dogs. Um, what we also know is that people are homeless, the dogs are very, very important to them. But they have pretty good regulations on those dogs and what's going on. And the Humane Society does come out and work with dog owners. <clears throat> And they teach the dog owners. They also will neuter and feed the dogs as well. Mm -hmm. So here's the outhouses I was talking about. And if you can see, it's it's not a place for people to camp and hang out for any extensive period of time. Um, it's pretty much the way Aura is running the hotels right now, is that, yes, you're homeless. We're going to serve you, but you need to have a plan. And they, since January, I don't remember the quite number. I, I think it was about well, five. They said they've gotten people housed from this facility as well. So they're working with the other homeless shelters in town and landlords, as we are doing at the hotels. And because they feel like their stuff is safe and they can leave it there, it, that's what lets them go to find the job that they need. Um, to do the stuff that they need to do to better their lives. And so with the case management involved, it's a huge piece. Um, nobody else is allowed on the property, so they can actually leave their stuff, feel comfortable with it, and then come back home again. Which is one of the main concerns and complaints we get a lot of times from the people that are homeless here, which is why we spend so much time getting new birth certificates and SSI cards, is because the theft is so high among our homeless population in these shelters. If you see where the, the arrow is right there, that's where the, the lockers are for people. And so, you know, they just have a small space. There's no need to be carrying a lot with them. And then there is also back here at the beginning of where the driveway is, a place to park their vehicles for those who have vehicles. And also recently, that's not in this picture, the church came and built wooden boxes. So that attaches to the platforms. And that allows them to lock their stuff in there as well. Okay. So it really does, even with all of the people in these tents, it looks as clean as you're seeing it right now. Yeah. Um, there was one lady with an extra blue tarp, but that, you know, she had a couple of cats and that was it. Otherwise it is this spotless out there. So that's a requirement to be able to stay here. Um, they've got a waiting list at this point, as you can imagine. This was only put up at this time for winter housing because of the weather, but also when it, we had that cold snap, the church put people up in hotels because it, these tents just did not cut keeping people warm at that time. So um, 
here we go. Um, that's what we looked at. This is one option to look at. And I know this is going to be something very fearful for people. If we even did want to move forward and discuss this option more, um, I think that would it would have to be sold to all the entities involved as a good place, but that it's going to be very well maintained. Um, they do have 24-hour care and support, if you will, or services. Uh, Mozilla uses a security company at night which um, I was uh, amazed at the cost of that. And, and they said the county picked it all up and I, I still can't see that happening, but um, that's what they do do there. Um, let's see. So the money also comes out of the ESG grant. Partly, uh, partly AMDD picks up part of it as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. CARES was a lot of it to get it going, the COVID CARES money. Um, so that's one option then, you know, and again, like we're saying, we're trying to think ahead because every year we come up to this time when winter's beginning and say, what are we going to do with the homeless? What are we going to do when it's get through cold? And then our, our current existing shelters get too full. So that's what we were looking at. That's what we started talking about. Um, anything Thank you. else I can add? Any questions? Thank you, Ms. Otega. Comments or questions from the commission? Yeah, Mayor, I guess I have one. Go ahead, Commissioner Lawford. So um, my understanding is that there's gonna be a bucket of money provided in the American Rescue Plan Act um, related to homelessness. And it there's a little bit of flexibility. I think it's gonna sort of track, largely track home, but with less of the restrictions under existing home funds. I'm just wondering, uh, Teresa, your thoughts on how quickly um, the city could turn around a proposal for whatever, right? I don't know if this is fully baked, but I just, I wonder, could we put together a small group or maybe that's already happening that can concretely get together a proposal for the city to submit, um, you know, so that we could access some of these additional dollars that are coming to the state. So I think first thing to do, Commissioner Laughlin, is, and Sharon, you might jump in on this, is to make sure that everyone is well aware of what we're looking towards and not overlapping, because I know we're looking at a women's homeless shelter as well. And that's a piece of it there. Um, there are different populations, really, from what we're seeing. Um, so I, I think that would be very important for people to know that one is not jumping before the other to do something like this. But the population that we're seeing is very different than an all women's shelter. So that would need to be gone through. Um, I'd really. What? Oh, yeah. All right. Like Laura says, we're addressing the overflow from the shelter. Um, and it seems like an awful lot this year to us. And we had to ask ourselves these questions. Is it because of COVID? Is it because of the money? Is it because of service provided? We think it's a little bit of each. It's also because the shelter, our current existing shelter can't take as many. Um, where the women's shelter has to wait for space for people to get in. <clears throat> and they, um, and because I think the services that the staff at Good Samaritan are providing, we're getting people housed, we're getting people medical care, we're getting people into nursing homes, that, and it just, all this fell into place. I mean, there are people on the streets that are so ill, they need to be in nursing homes, but you're on the streets and you can't take a chance to focus to get this done. So I think that needs to be real clear. What will we be addressing? The overflow, like Ara says, it's addressing the medical needs of the homelessness in this community, which is much bigger than I thought. And then to get them housed in one way or another. But also through this project we put together, it's been helping people self-solve their situations. And again, when you're on the streets and you're only option at that moment in time is survival. You're not thinking about how am I going to self solve this problem, but coming in and talking to staff they're able to. So, you know, my first question would be, when, when is that grant due? We definitely like to look at that. Um, we're excited about this. We want to see this happening. We know this next round of money from 
cares? It's I think because Sam is receiving four hundred and fifty thousand on this, but this is done. What is the date on this done? It's six six months. Six months, and then it's gone. At the rate we're going at the hotels, we'll be done in about six months. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think there's a timeline to look at. Let's get people involved and let them know what we'd like to do, and then start putting it together. Thank you. Ms. Ortega, are you in talks with the county also? The county, um, not on this. We This just happened to be we started talking. And... Um, okay, I'll rephrase my question. Do you intend to get into talks with the county also? Well, that's a good question if we intend to, because that's how this started when um, City Commission Holiday said, what can we do together? What can we and the county do together? And... Uh, oh, Commissioner, right? A lot of my game. Um, that's where we need to talk with the county as well. Yeah, you know, we've had several um, workings with the county with the COVID, the COVID funds as well, but that's kind of slowing down now. And we are no longer funded through our place through the county. So it might be a fresh start with the county if the city and county could come together on this and maybe work that grant together would be that would be fantastic. And I think someone reading those grants would really like to see it in that manner. So okay. immediately, no. I think in the future, yes, we need to look at that. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Commissioner Dean. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm wondering, do you know what the the number of the overflow population is that, that you've noted? Ms. Otega? Um, I'm sorry, I thought she was asking you. You know, like I said, there just seems to be an awful lot more that we're addressing this year, because if we've served over 100 people, 105 people since November, I think it was, and our existing shelter downtown, I think they're capping at 30 people, and then they're not letting people come in or they're letting them go. Um, I don't know what it's been in the past. I could definitely try and find some of those numbers so we could look at that. But this seems quite high to me. Yeah, I, I know I'd be interested in better understanding, you know, what, not just what's the demand right now, but what do we think it will continue to be, especially if you're thinking about, you know, addressing problems as we move into the future to being a little bit more proactive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank I, you. I'll find that. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> any other comments from the commission? Do we have any public comments? Madam Clerk, do we have any Mr. raised Mayor, hands? I have no raised hands and no written public comment at this time on this matter. Thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Otega. I just want to add one thing. I think at the least that we could do is to implement a position for a case manager to follow the homeless and do what we're doing right now. Because Actually, what we've completely changed here from working in-house to mostly at the, the hotels and doing case management is what we, that was not what we initially started out with it at Good Samaritan. And as we all know, several years ago, the case management positions around the state were cut. And that's, that's a huge need, that position to work with the homelessness. That's it. Thank you. Mayor, if I may, just go ahead, uh, Madam Manager. Thank you. Just to close out the uh, city manager report, uh, just wanted to just underscore a couple of key points here and the work of our team with uh, Ms. Ortega and Good Samaritans. We're so very thankful for their help and their hard work with our police officers as well as our, our team overall in addressing gaps that, that um, we're running into. Oftentimes, we are we're actually, um, we have homeless that are sleeping inside the police department at times because mm -hmm. on the floor because they cannot get space somewhere. So uh, the idea of having some sort of a solution that addresses this gap um, is, is important to all of us. Uh, just wanna underscore the two points. The first is this alternative idea of uh, middle housing in a lack of a better term. And then the second is this uh, more of a, a support for 
someone who has become homeless so that when they come out of a treatment center, they have the support that moves them into permanent housing. So they have that continued and ongoing conversation. And so our next meeting of the uh, city county uh, joint work session is on April 6th. And if you're interested, I can ask uh, the commission, the county to add to our agenda a presentation from Good Samaritan on this. Well, I think I hear you, um, Madam Manager, but I still think the city, I mean, the county should be involved in this. This is not only a city issue. This is a county, this is a state, this is a national issue. And I think we all can sit down to the table and get involved in this. So. I guess maybe a question for the city manager. How do we get, I mean, I just am a little concerned or maybe nervous about the potential of missed opportunities with some of the federal money that I think could potentially be moving quickly. Um, and, and I think, I mean, Teresa's is right. Like this, there are a number of needs and I think a number of different working groups that are um, working at um, looking at ha housing from a variety of angles. But I, what is the best next step as far as identifying which potential project is, is ready, competitive, you know, and that we've got the right partners ready to just launch. Um, is that a separate working group in your mind? I mean, I've had some conversations with stakeholders in the, in the community. I, what is the best next step or direction that we could potentially give you at this moment um, so that we're ready come the end of April to, to, to submit something potentially? So, um, oh, sorry, that question is, I'm sorry, that question is for the city manager, okay, sorry. Good, good. good. <laughs> I have an idea, but you're better at this. <laughs> Go ahead, Miss Manager. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioner O'Loughlin. Um, yeah, the ESG and the home dollars that are being infused through the federal dollars are, are projects that we would have to apply for, and the competition for those, as you will know, are, are, is pretty pretty high, but that also does not mean that the county shouldn't and couldn't be a part of the conversation in application as well. So I point out the April 6th meeting only because it is the first opportunity and it is also our budget planning session with the county. So it is a, it does hit it to two prongs of um, conversations. I don't know when the distribution of the federal dollars to more directly address your, your question. There's two parts, I think, that I'm hearing. So I just want to make sure that the first is housing overall and and affordable housing and then the second is homelessness and that's really this this conversation around homelessness so the two are both conversations that definitely need to take place and should take place with with the commission now uh, this commission and the, the county commission what is the solution that Teresa, the solution that miss ortega is bringing forward is really one that requires somewhere for it to go someone to monitor and someone to manage. And so those are those are three parts that have, have not been discussed in further detail. So having a further conversation around partners, uh, certainly the commission can create a, a separate task force itself. If it's interested in focusing in specifically on this one issue as soon as dollars flow to us, I have not received information as to when we'll actually see those federal dollars come to us. So even if we were to wait until the April 6th meeting with the county commission to talk about their plans with their dollars, um, I can continue to work with the team. I also did share that on April 14th, we plan to bring to the administrative meeting a process for the federal funding spending based on some of the higher priorities that you all have brought toward the 2021 budget and noting those one-time expenses. Again, Using federal dollars implies one-time expense because their ongoing management conversation here around this navigator or support person from homelessness to permanent housing, that's an ongoing annual budget conversation that might actually be beneficial to us to have at the county with the county on the 6th. So just so, to give you some timing. So um, Ms. Otega, would you be willing to present at the city county work session meeting? Sure, we'd be happy to come <clears throat> Excuse me. and review what we've gone over. Um, <clears throat> I guess I just want to say 
Um, I just, just so we have everybody on the right page on this and it doesn't appear we're pulling in any other direction. We want to make sure we're all working as a team and showing that we'll be working with the overflow, but then also getting people housed. So um, absolutely, we'd be happy to do that. Okay, so Madam Manager, would you arrange with the, the county to have her on the agenda, please? Yes, I will. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. That can Any other questions for Ms. Otega? Maybe just a state, uh, just some comments, Mr. Mayor. Um, Go ahead, Commissioner. I generally agree with Commissioner O'Loughlin that we should be looking at the the opportunities on any of the federal dollars that would be coming in. And I'd say, even if we can't get anything out of the county on that discussion, um, you know, this is a this is an opportunity. It's going to be a fast turnaround. Um, and, you know, I'd hope we would provide sort of consensus direction to the manager to work with, whether it's Good Samaritan, whether it's a, a coalition of groups in the community, um, you know, a task force, working group, I, you know, for me, I don't really care. I would prefer that it be as um, efficient and tactical as possible so that we can actually make a decision rather than having 25 meetings right. um, to figure out, right? I mean, this is a point where if we can spend these dollars for the public good, the need is there. So let's let's get it out there and let's improve people's lives. Um, I think it's it's good to wet it to that discussion as well of those ongoing and proactive needs. Um, I think it's going to raise other discussions we need to think about um, in terms of the sort of spirit of service grant awards that we just discussed. Um, you know, if if it is something that this body is going to look at longer term, year over year support um, for any sorts of these programs, be they housing, be they case management, be they long-term management, right? I mean, you can have one-time money set up this program. It's gonna have to be managed over time. Um, that's money that's going to have to be held onto by the city or by the county or by both, rather than turning that money over to um, a private organization like we've discussed with um, the community foundation. So there's nuanced dis discussions to be had um, going forward on these, but I would hope that we have general consensus to ask the manager to basically come back to us, work with Teresa and, and folks to just tell us what is the um, best way we can use these dollars to our advantage for those in the greatest need in Helena. Thank you, Commissioner Holliday and O'Loughlin. Uh, yeah, and I'm in full support of that. I don't know about the, the others, so I'll, I'll just get quick feedback from you whether uh, the manager can work alongside with uh, Ms. Ortega to get the ball rolling. So when we do get those funds, we can start the process ASAP. Do you have any thoughts on that, commissioners? I, I think you're, oh, oh go ahead. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, well, I didn't, we didn't hear anything, guys. Mr. So, Mayor, I'm in support of this oh, effort. Thank you. I, Ms. Ray, I am too. Um, I was just going to say, I think that the conversation and that going back to my question of making sure that we understand what the ongoing support looks like and, and that we're continuously being proactive and not, um, you know, launching a project that won't go anywhere after a year, because this is obviously continuing to be a need in the community that, um, you know, I, maybe it is just COVID, but from, from the presentation, it sounds like, you know, it will continue to be a lot of things. So I think that we need to, to not just look at, you know, one year out, but what does this look like long-term? Thank you, Madam Manager. Did you understand it? Did you get it? <laughs> yes, I think I did, Mayor. I uh, will also just, uh, yes, I will come back and tell you the best ways that we can use these one-time dollars in working on the response to um, the ideas brought forward by Ms. Ortega. And then also we'll add to the uh, next city and county joint meeting, this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, can I just clarify? I mean, we have a separate, we have a separate bu bucket of money that's coming directly to the city. That's actually not the funds I'm talking about, right? Like I'm actually talking about having a group that's ready to submit a proposal to the state for the housing specific money. So just so that we're clear about that. And I think mm -hmm. that's gonna take a little bit of work from the city to identify the right stakeholders, put together that group and start to really begin to think that through over the next month and a half 
so that we're ready with a competitive proposal, whatever that might be, right? right. So just to uh, clarify that's what that. Got. Uh, at least that's what I got gather from the discussion. Any other comments or questions? Ms. Ortega and team, we thank you. Thank you. Uh, Madam Manager, are you done with your presentation? Yes, I am, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, communications from Helena Citizens Council. Representative Andrew. Good evening, Mayor Collins, Commissioners, and City Manager. I will be brief. Uh, I'll sum up our last meeting, some of which has been brought to you in the last administrative meeting, the capital transit bus signage recommendation. Uh, thank you for entertaining that. And we look forward to hearing from Transportation Systems Director Kanopke later this spring on his research. The second one was took the better part or almost all of our meeting and that coincides with the city manager's e-bike -po e policy agenda. Uh, one of our members, Meg Bishop, wrote up a recommendation which we tabled until we can see where the city is going with this, but we would like to be part of the discussion. So we will reach out to both the city manager, the parks director and uh, HOMAC to see what uh, discussions they're having. And for this coming Wednesday's meeting, we will be seeing city planner McConnell and Alvarez bringing together a presentation on growth policy in the neighborhood and kind of get an update on what's transpiring there. So that looks pretty interesting. And lastly, our budget committee is keeping HCC updated and is also reaching out to HCC members for suggestions, ideas on the different departments and uh, ask, asking us to uh, come back with comments and feedback for uh, the upcoming budget work sessions. So that's my summation for this, uh, this uh, city commission meeting. So thank you very much for hearing me. Okay, thank you, Mr. Andrew. Any questions for Mr. Andrew? Any public comments? Thanks, Mr. Andrew. And uh, I'm sure Mr. Kanapke is diligently at work on the proposal from HCC. Regular items. A resolution of intention to vacate a portion of the alley right of way south of 1775 University between University Street and La Grande Canyon Boulevard. Director Leland. Thank you, Mayor Commission. I'll share my screen here. Um, and what we're talking about is there's an undeveloped alley that is located just south of this is La Grand Canyon Boulevard. This is University Street. This is Laurel and Glendale. So it's up towards uh, the higher part of Helena on the west side. And it is part of the west side project where we install, installed water and sewer. And that's how we kind of came into conversations with the property owners, Tim and Jan Haran. They own the property, the lot that is located just south of the alley and just north of the alley. So they own both of the properties on both sides of the alley and have requested to vacate uh, the alley in between. It is undeveloped. Um, however, at this point, I'd like to say that I think it's a little too premature to be able to vacate this alley because it'll create a long, long um, dead end alley that could be used as access to lots that are undeveloped, but are looking to be developed. So it would limit the access to the properties next to their property that they have. 
Uh, they do have access on Itasca Street, which is undeveloped and is also a dead end road, which makes it very difficult for fire truck emergency service access, turnaround, uh, solid waste collection, because they cannot physically access the Grand Canyon. It is at least a 12 foot grade difference between the end of Laurel Street and the Grand Canyon. So physically, we cannot access the Grand. So there is limited. Um, opportunities for access to these properties. We would create a very long dead end alley with no turnaround. And then Idaska Street does not have a turnaround where they would access it. So at this time, until we figure out what the adjacent property owners uh, are doing with developing those lots, the recommendation by staff would actually be to deny this. And then at a future time, possibly come back and see if there's something that could be done. We do have utilities that have went into this alley to be able to access these lots so they will be buildable. And there's also private utilities that are in there. Regardless if it's uh, vacated or not, we will have to, we will still maintain an easement. So it will be a separation of property. They can't build over the top because there will be a utility easement in there, but we will not have a public access easement or right away through there. So. At this point, I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, if you have them. And I know the applicant is on the Zoom meeting and I think would like to talk. Thank you, Ms. Director Leland. Comments or questions from the commission? <clears throat> Public comments? Okay. There you go. Okay, did you want to comment, Jan? Uh, so this is Jan Haran, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, <clears throat> as one thing that, you know, if it could be all written up is yes, um, since it's going to be all tore up because they are going to be setting sewer in there, because right now, if you look at the property, we have grass growing uh, right up to the, right through the alley, but um, and there were trees there that were planted before my husband even bought the property many years ago. But we were wondering if, um, I, I know I, I had a concern with emergency vehicles. I even have a concern with garbage because right across Laurel, uh, can, can we do a? No, I can't. Oh, but uh, there's an alley closure there. There are four homes built on an alley and at the end of that alley is a turnaround, I think, for uh, you know emergency vehicles or garbage. But we watch, we watch the garbage truck back up the whole way. And yes, I can see where that would really be a problem. If we were to vacate this section, uh, could we have written in there that we could also, I mean, any emergency vehicle or, or the garbage, uh, but just not the homeowners that will be building homes in that. But so it would still be vacated except for um, the city, what do you call these, utility people. Uh, and as far as to stop probably the homeowners that will eventually build there from driving that, that we would probably put a gate at the corner of our property. Ugh, does that make any sense? But okay, uh, I guess that was it. So um, could I just show a couple of photographs? Is that possible? Yeah, sure. I don't know, how, uh, Madam Clerk, will he be able to share his screen or share the screen? Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, uh, if uh, Mr. Horan has the capabilities on his computer, he uh, I can give him panelist rights, yes. Give me just a moment. Go ahead, Mr. Horan. Okay, um, so. So once Mr. Horan, you're back in the meeting as a panelist, you'll need to unmute yourself. And then you should have access to your screen sharing.
You're muted. Okay. All right. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. And can you see me? I mean, can you see the photo? No. Are the photos up? The photos are not up. Okay. All right. Well, I guess we'll forget about that. But uh, anyway, I guess Ryan did answer uh, one of my questions, which was, uh, the business of Itasca Street. Uh, I thought maybe the property owners could come in and out through there as well as utilities. Um, but apart from that, I really don't have anything else to say. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. <clears throat> comments or questions from the commission? Oh, we went through that already, right? Public comments, any other public comments? Okay, at this time I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Commissioner Logan. I would move to deny a resolution of intention to vacate a portion of alley right of way located between lots one and two and lots 15 and 16 in block 189 of the Bradford edition south of 1775 University, Twin University Street and LeGrand Cannon Boulevard. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Halliday. Aye. Commissioner Dean. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner O'Loughlin. Aye. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries five to zero. Thank you. At this time, is there anybody from the public wishes to address the commission? Uh, can I make one comment? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, the alley, which is 16 feet wide, hmm. um, is that, uh, as it's situated, and uh, of course we built without knowing any of this, that alley uh, pretty much would come within inches of the driveway into our garage. Uh, it would take out several trees. It would also run through about a four foot tier of rock that is hosting a lot of trees. Um, I guess my question is, is it possible to do, if and when that alley does become permanent, is it possible to make some kind of small land swap? Um, uh, there are a lot of alleys up here that run at odd angles horseshoe bends, uh, so on and so forth. If we could move that alley somewhat away from our house, uh, it will literally, well, it will practically be underneath our bedroom window. So um, owning the property to the south of it, um, if there is just some way to put a small angle on that alley so that we can get it away from our driveway, away from the house, away from the tiers and away from the uh, trees. Uh, that would be it. Thank you, Mr. Ron. Okay. Uh, Mr. Leland, you got any response for that? Mayor Commissioners, yes, I'd be happy to work in with the property owners to see if there is any land swap and options to be able to go forward. We're always willing to work. And as I said before, I just think it was premature because of denying access to some of the lots that were going to be developed. So we are happy to work with them and I will have staff get and team get a hold of them to, to work with them to see if, what options are available to them. Thank you, Director Leonard. Do we have any other public comments? Anybody from the public wishes to address the commission? Madam Clerk, do we have any raised hands? 
Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, I have no other raised hands and I've received no written public comment at this time. Any final comments from the commission? All right, at this time the meeting is formally adjourned.